Hi again, my name is Harvey Molino, and uh, if you're just joining us, I'm going to be uh, giving you a little snapshot of what to expect should you attend a John M. Campbell G4 gas conditioning and processing uh, uh, course. Today, the subject is going to be compression. Should you attend a G4 course at any of the venues that we offer uh, worldwide, uh, you will learn in this uh, chapter how to describe the principles of positive displacement and centrifugal uh, compressors. Uh, you'll be able to calculate power requirements. You'll be able to explain how to use centrifugal compressor performance curves. You will recognize how compressors react to changes in process conditions, which I suggest is very important in a facility since conditions, conditions change very frequently. Uh, you'll be able to compare drivers and describe how a gas turbine works. And you'll recognize how, uh, different methods on how to control uh, centrifugal compressors. Uh, if there is interest, we also spend time on positive displacement uh, compression, depending on the interest of the class. Uh, as an overview, the way um, I like to introduce compression is to give a review of the, of the basic principles of, uh, that we've learned to this point. The uh, first principle is the ability to uh, calculate power. And power comes from one of the earlier chapters in, uh, um, in heat and material balances, uh, where the power, the actual power, is equal to your mass rate times your isentropic uh, change in enthalpy divided by your efficiency. Your actual flow rate is equal to your mass rate divided by your gas density. Uh, equation three tells you how to calculate your gas density. All of these, one, two, and three, have been um, uh, reviewed in earlier chapters. Uh, the gas density is equal to your molecular weight of your gas times its pressure divided by the compressibility factor Z divided by the universal gas constant, R, and the um, absolute temperature. The uh, fourth item is the determination of your isentropic head. And this is uh, a big equation, which I'll describe in a moment. And the fifth item is the compressor curve. If you have these five items available, you'll have a pretty good understanding of how to evaluate a compressor, be it a centrifugal or a positive displacement machine. Let's look at the head equation, equation four on the screen. What it says is that the head that is produced by the uh, compressor is equal to your suction pressure, T1, it's equal to your average compressibility factor, which is the compressibility of your gas at your inlet condition plus the compressibility at the outlet condition, uh, and you take the average of that. There are uh, simplifications that uh, we talk about in G4 uh, to enable you to quickly estimate that compressibility factor. R is the universal gas constant, which is uh, the value will, will be a function of the units that you use. If you jump to the denominator of that equation, you have uh, K, which is the ratio of heat capacities at constant pressure divided by the heat capacity at constant volume. You have the molecular weight of your gas. And then in the square brackets, you have your ratio of your suction pressure to your, excuse me, the ratio of your discharge pressure to your suction pressure, uh, and all to the power 
of K minus 1 over K, and K, again, is the ratio of heat capacities, uh, all minus 1. So one of the things to notice by just looking at this head equation over here, which looks complicated but really isn't, is that the power that you require to drive a compressor is a function of the mass rate times the isentropic head. But the isentropic head, in turn, is a function of compression ratio. What that means is that for the same mass of gas, if you're going to compress it from, let's say, one bar to four bar, you'll require more power than compressing that same mass of gas from 100 bar to 200 bar, because power is a function of compression ratio. We talk about the uh, differences between a uh, positive displacement machine and a centrifugal machine. A centrifugal machine is going to be, in essence, a constant head machine. It wants the head to remain constant, and the performance, the discharge pressure, will more often than not float depending on the uh, conditions, the molecular weight and the suction temperature of the, uh, of the system. The effect that this could have on your facilities is explored in greater detail in a G4 class. Here's an example of what we talk about. You have a centrifugal compressor with a constant speed electric driver. Your gas composition changes. It gets heavier. But in this particular example, your suction temperature and pressure does not change. Your compressed gas goes into a constant pressure system. Based on the information we've just discussed, you should be able to determine what happens to the flow and what happens to the power when these changes take place. This is one of the things we talk about in a G4 class. The next time we meet, we will talk about refrigeration. Until then, thank you.